Hello everyone, welcome to the second video in the series about XYZ Tracker Plugin or Micromanager by ASI. In the first video, we talked about how to install Micromanager, how to configure it, how to install the XYZ Tracker Plugin and others. In this video, we're going to focus on the Z Tracking aspect of the plugin. And in the next video, focus on the XYZ tracking features of the plugin. So let's begin um, uh, some housekeeping first. Uh, make sure the camera is running well. As you know, the plugin that only gives you limited control of the camera, it can only change the trigger and capture images. It can't really change the exposure time or uh, gain or you know LED intensity uh, so you want to make sure everything's running fine so what we kind of want at the end of it is a reasonably looking image <laughs> okay something like that something that looks reasonable good contrast good features uh, uh, turn off the manual and something that has a reasonably high frame rate. I feel like at least 20 frames per second is needed. Anything below, you're not going to get, uh, it's going to have a hard time tracking. Okay, everything set up. Uh, just for a general setup of the system I have, I'm working with an ASI uh, RAM Infinity Microscope and it's set up to have two optical paths. One of the optical path has the tunable lens and we'll be dithering that to get a focus change without actually moving the objective and that has a, our point gray chameleon 3 camera which is what the plugin will uh, use uh, to capture images and uh, do XYZ tracking. The other optical part just has a tube lens and a center camera at the end of it. This is uh, going to be your main data acquisition path. Um, the plugin doesn't need anything from this camera, so it's totally yours and you use it uh, to run your experiments. Just to show you uh, how it should look for you, uh, these two optical parts should be par focal with each other. As I move the objective, the focus is changing for both of these images and, and both of them are in focus about the same point. There might be a micron here or uh, there, where on the whole they need to be par focal. So that's important for best Z focus or Z tracking. And for X and Y tracking, it's important that both of these have the same field of view. Um, so as you see, they're not exactly centered to each other, but they're mostly there. That's what we would want. Uh, Any more, and then the plugin's going to try to keep the sample in view with this camera and if the field of view doesn't overlap this your main data acquisition camera is not going to have the sample in view at all so so it's best to have both of these uh, par focal and same field of view so this i'm using a manual input device a knob to move the objective and as you see, the focus is changing for both, but the tunable lens is only on this optical path. So when I move the tunable lens, um, just a second, it looks like my tunable lens may not be active. So I'm going to give my tunable lens control of one of the knobs by that command. Okay. Uh, that's odd. What you were supposed to see... Oh yeah, let me do that. Sorry, I had it set up. Okay. 
sorry for <laughs> um, okay back here so yeah let me increase the size of this video so you have a better look okay so moving the objective focus is changing for both right both are getting blurry and when I just move the tunable lens focus is only changing on this image because it's only on this optical path this optical path remains unaffected so you see when the tunable lens is being disturbed the image of your main data acquisition camera is not being affected so you don't have to worry about the tunable lens uh, causing blurry images or uh, uh, issues to your main data acquisition camera so that's how it works so the plugin moves the tunable lens very quickly it's able to get the focus scores at different focus depths without moving the actual optical path and when it knows uh, how exactly to move it's going to move the main optical path to bring the image back into the field of view see it's back to focus okay so that's the general idea how the plugin is going to work so uh, let's try it out okay. start the plugin uh, XYZ tracker remember where I put it okay uh, start off by telling the plugin which XY states to use this is just only going to be the one tell the plugin with z states to use this is the one that is attached to the objective or the sample stage is attached to so the tunable lens there's only going to be one of these uh, and your tracker camera not your main data acquisition camera so tell the plugin all of these uh, binning is uh, the plugin bins the images coming from the camera further down from what micromanager gives it this is to increase uh, or decrease the processing time and only after this binning the image is passed on to the focus calculating uh, routine and also the XYZ tracking routine uh, up image scale has to do with the size of the up image window so when I hit the start acquisition button the tunable lens begins deterring so as you see uh, this image is uh, fine but since this optical part has the tunable lens and the image is being deterred uh, the image is blurry um, the tunable lens is deterred with the following amplitude at the following frequency in the following pattern you can choose from a triangle pattern square pattern sign pattern uh, it's up to you to pick which one sign seems to work the best so I would recommend sign and what happens is uh, the tunable lens is deterring the, the tunable lens card is deterring the tunable lens in a sign pattern and it's putting out a pulse at the top peak and at the bottom valley uh, these pulses are connected to the camera and the camera is being triggered at these points so this image is is being captured at the bottom of the tunable lenses data and this image is being uh, captured at the top of the tunable lenses data that's why we call it up and down so one is uh, yeah so these are at two different focal lengths and this is in between so we're kind of getting focus score of what it would be like for the z drive to be uh, focused slightly below where it's right now and slightly above so yeah I have this routine called star sweep and I'm going to run it and I'm going to explain what this routine does and what this routine is doing right now is it's scanning through the sample it's scanning about 100 microns it's going from minus 15 microns it's this is the actual Z drive the 
drive the object is attached to it's going from minus 50 to plus 50 and it's reporting the focus score of the up image in the red and the focus score of the down image in the blue and it's using the Teningrad algorithm uh, to do it. So what you're seeing is uh, at this point at minus 15 microns image of the down image is sharper than the image of the up image and as it scans through it is an inversion so now the up image is more in uh, is sharper than the down image and by taking the delta between these two four scores we are getting a slope a curve and this is excellent this is what we want to see doesn't matter if the curve is sloping left to right or right to left as long as there's a slope so here as we see now when the focus moves we are going to see a change in the up and down focus and from that we'll be able to determine which direction to move the z drive to get us back to focus so uh, this is this is what we want uh, let me show you how it looks like when there's no image and just just a flat background let me run the z sweep again cool and what you're gonna see now is just a flat curve look at the delta it's pretty flat and that's because the up score hasn't changed and the down score hasn't changed because we're just looking at background right there's just nothing in there so now when the z position changes there's nothing noticeable the focus scores haven't changed so the plugin doesn't know what direction or how much to even move whether it actually needs to move to fix the focus because there's nothing so this is bad if you're seeing this you're probably not you have something out of a, a alignment or you, you're pretty much looking at nothing and uh, back here again let me focus it here and run the z sweep again it's yep the nice slope is back this is excellent this is something we can work with and let's see how, how it does so now you can imagine okay so we started off at zero position right so that's our delta so that's what it's being reported back so you can even see here at zero microns 1.5 million something um so 138 million so that's about that so you're right here okay let me run a quick calibration this is uh this is a small routine it takes the readings at the current position moves five microns takes the readings again and from that it's able to determine how what the slope is whether it's going from left to right or right to left and sets the polarity up and it's figuring out other uh, information like minimum delta this is the minimum delta the stage or the plugin should see before it applies correction it's meant to uh, prevent tiny adjustments or unnecessary adjustments when there's not enough signal to determine anything and uh, minimum focus score this is to prevent it from focusing on background so let's see how it does so you uh, it's in idle mode oh, sorry ready mode and you lock it uh, in ready mode it's able to detect the corrections but it's not applying it and when you lock it it's now applying corrections so we're at that position so say let me see if i can get everything we want to look at in view okay so now when I uh, move the sample the delta is changing so that means the delta is falling or increasing and uh, the Z 
is moved to compensate. So let me show that again. Uh, unlock it. Make sure everything's in focus with respect to this image here. That's your that acquisition camera, right? You want to keep that in focus. Okay. I'm going to lock it. Okay. The focus score was zero using this offset. This offset was increased and so that we get the least delta possible. And now as I move the stage, I created a slight inclination in the sample by putting some masking tape and causing uh, the side to slit at a slight inclination. And as you see, as I, oh well, I'm actually, yeah, okay, there we go. Because there wasn't enough minimum delta there, uh, now, as I move around, uh, Z is changing to keep the sample in view. Now, Tenningrad is a decent algorithm, but as you see, even with binning the image 4 on already a 1000 by 768 image, so, you know, that's like a, what is it, a 200? Uh, pixel by some image, it's still taking four milliseconds. We can do better. So uh, there's a, another algorithm, Golath, that's much faster. So when I change the Z algorithm, I need to restart the acquisition for settings to take effect. So change that. Uh, as you see, the focus scores are different now. And that's changes from algorithm to algorithm. It doesn't mean it's a bad or a good algorithm. It's just that it reports the focus scores in a different uh, way. Uh, here's another algorithm, uh, sharp edges. It reports the focus score. Um, that's R. Let's see. Yeah, here's sharp edges. And it reports the focus score in like decimal. Doesn't mean it's a bad or good algorithm but each algorithm reports the score differently. And so whenever you change the algorithm, you want to restart the acquisition and also do a calibration too. So let's go back to Violet. Uh, it's pretty fast. As you see, it's only taking a millisecond where Tenigrad took like a, a three uh, milliseconds. Tenigrad has its benefits. It's, it's immune to intensity variations. So, it might, it has its uses, but in this case where the intensity is pretty even, uh, well, that's good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna focus in this image, for this image manually, zero it, uh, run the Z sweep, see how we are doing here. Cool, uh, nice slope here. What is the slope has changed? It's now it's not sloping uh, left to right, but right to left. So let's see how it does when I run the calibration again. See the calibration change. There was something odd here. It, usually the slope changes, doesn't change like this. Um, but that's why we have calibration to fix things like that. Okay, so now let's see how it does. Um, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna move to the background. And as you see, even though there's nothing really, there's still some focus code being generated. So this is where get low focus code is handy. And it copies the lowest value here into this control. And if the focus code falls to this level, uh, the plugin ign stops and it doesn't do any correction. So bringing it back here, and I'm gonna lock it. So that's our Z position. And as I move through the sample, focus correction is being applied. And the sample's staying pretty focused. So, yep. And when I move to a background, uh, Z is not running away. It's not trying to focus on these specs here. Yep, that's, that's how it's done. Now Z gain, that's the multiplier being a multi applied to the delta 
uh, normalized delta and then that generates a correction factor given to the z stage so um, there's a trial and error process to determine what's the best uh, gain here so let me unlock it and let me increase it to uh, a value much larger than 50 say 200 now let me lock again and look at how the Z position behaves as I'm moving. You see, it's it's actually taking it longer uh, to settle down. And that's because it's constantly overshooting, it's overcorrecting, and then it's then again overshooting again. So it's now ringing. So it's, uh, it's not bad, but your Z drive is actually all correctly moving so that's gonna result in bad blurry images so that's why you don't want to have a z gain that's really high so let me stop that go back and uh, let's see how it does for a very small gain lock that and now as i move through the sample corrections happening but as you see it's taking a while for it to correct see that's taking at least a couple of seconds you don't want that you maybe it's okay for your application but chances are that's not best it's correcting and you know but it's wow that's taking it such a long time it's settled it's stable it's good in it's good fo focus no complaints but it just took it a long time so that's why you, you don't want even a long, a very small focus score. So trial and error, you know, 50, right? I originally, let's try 55, uh, lock it, and, you know, that's faster. I can live with that. That's not too slow. It's making corrections really quick. You know, it could, I could even bump it up further and can be okay. Yeah, let me try 100 actually. Yep, that's pretty responsive. See that? It may be just slightly over. I see it go back and forth a bit. So maybe 100 is just a bit too much. Yeah, let me try. 75 yeah so yeah it's gonna change for you it depends on how f what kind of z drive you're using Ch uh, chances are if you're using an asi a ls50 the same numbers might work for you but i'm using a stationary sample right what if i'm u tracking a worm or something something that's moving much faster so then having a higher gain is important so so yeah it's you have to experiment with it uh but hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a pain c75 seems to be doing a good enough job okay it's for this scenario or this uh configuration 75 is good enough that's where i'm gonna leave it at okay so that's Z tracking. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me let me tell you about logging. So uh, Z tracker. Uh, you if you want, you probably want to save the location of the Z stage when you are in lock mode, right? By setting this up and selecting the log file, you can save the X and X position, Y position, the Z position into a text file uh, when you're in lock mode. So let me show you how that works. Uh, let me unlock and let me pick a file. Let me say tracker, tracker log today, save that. Um, lock now move and let the corrections happen. Let's 
stop blocking and go back and see how it is. Track it lock today, and that's the one I just uh, selected. And that's the output from the tracking uh, from these past few minutes. It's going to save the time in system time. This is in milliseconds. X position, Y position, and the Z position in microns are, uh, since XY tracker wasn't m running, uh, there is X and Y position is not being recorded. Uh, the Z position is being recorded. We were moving in X and Y, but unless we are in lock state, those positions are not being read. This is to save on serial communication. So, so that's why X and Y is not being, um, it's not accurate, but Z is. And as you can see, another thing to note, the, the units is in milliseconds, but check out the time interval. There's only a five milliseconds interval here. Nine milliseconds, five again, five and five, but check it out here, it's about uh, 31 milliseconds. And that's because uh, uh, it's only gonna read the access position if it's moving. So in this case, the stage wasn't moving, and so the, the track wasn't querying the stage for its position. And it took a while before we moved again, and so it started recording again. That's why the time interval is not going to be fixed. It's only going to record when the stage is being is being moved. So watch for that. Uh, don't expect at uh, fixed time intervals. Okay. Let's see here. Oh yeah. For more information on the uh, plugin itself, check out the manual. You can access it by clicking on the manual button. It launches your browser, the default browser on your computer, and go to the asi.com slash docs slash asi xyz tracker plugin. Um, the manual talks about how to install the plugin and other things. Um, then uh, detailed information on each of the tracking routines. These are the X and Y tracking routines. Um, then, uh, yeah, these are the Z tracking routines. They're pretty similar. Volat should work for most scenarios, if not Tenningrad. Um, these are fast and work well. Um, and then uh, description about each control in much more detail than I'm, I have given in this video. Um, let's see if anything else I'm missing. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's a button here. Uh, it's like, when you engage log, let me bring this image back into focus. Okay, zero it, and I'm gonna lock. And as I'm traveling, I am, uh, and and I engage log, right? When I was at, uh, it's kind of at uh, zero microns, right? So as I scan through the sample, and my focus score. Uh, and my stages is corrected to keep my sample in view and moved by 20 microns. When I unlock, I can hit move Z back and I come back to the original position where it was zero uh, microns. That's just to recover if, if uh, the tracker did something unintentional. Um, let's see what else might be useful. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna go over how to do, uh, how the X and Y tracking works and what each of the settings does. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, please contact us with any suggestions or, uh, or if I need to, uh, if you need better explanation on a few certain things. Um, thank you, you have a good day, bye.